I'm Dean Opperman and this is Observations. Coco wasn't a dog. She was a spiritual being having a canine experience. And in our time together, she converted me into one of those people who look at animals as spiritual superiors. When people would say to me, is this your dog? I'd laugh and say, no, I'm her human. It was evident from the beginning. Coco wasn't the one I would have picked when I was shown a litter of miniature dachshunds back in 1990. The six pups, none bigger than an Atascadero tamale, were lined up on a tiled wet bar for my inspection. As I looked them over, the tiny red one at the far end leapt from the bar and onto my shoulder. I'll never forget that deliberate and beautiful dive. Well, I said, laughing, I guess I'll take this one. Coco was also a living, breathing backstage pass, her charms and charisma enabling her to go where no dog had gone before. Her Uma Thurman eyes overcame many a reluctant landlord and won over the desk managers at some of California's finest hotels. She was one of the few dogs ever to ride in a hot air balloon, snowboard at Lake Arrowhead, ride a bellyboard off Santa Claus Beach, and take daily motorcycle rides with me, wearing her own little helmet. Most folks were amazed I'd go to the trouble to barbecue her a steak. She plays you like a Stradivarius, they'd say. But I owed her. In our 13 years together, Coco saw me through some pretty tough times. I marveled at the bliss of her regal old soul. She softened me and made me see that everything was going to be okay. When times were bad, Coco was tangible evidence of God on Earth. One day I noticed she was having trouble breathing and after a visit to Carpinteria's legendary Dr. Otto, it was determined that Coco had cancer, part of a canine cancer epidemic in the area. No one knows why. Coco's spirits rose following every chemo treatment and for months I was able to pretend she was going to beat it. Then in month six it stopped working. Many people were telling me to put her down. I called my friend Wendy who'd lost her dog the year before. How do you know when to put your dog to sleep? I asked. You'll know, Wendy said. You'll know. A few days later, I awoke to find that Coco had somehow managed to pull herself up on my bed to sleep with me, something she hadn't been able to do for weeks. I took her outside where she waddled over to a rose bush and collapsed, her fall jarring loose several pink petals that fell to the ground all around her. Squinting into the morning sunlight, she looked up at me with a surrender I'd never seen before, and I knew. I held Coco in my arms and sobbed as Wendy drove us to Dr. Otto's. Suddenly, just a few blocks from the vet, Coco leaned forward and looked at me very intently. With purity and directness, she mustered her remaining power to say, Hey, remember all the fun we had? It was so startling, so powerful, I switched from crying to laughing in an instant. Then she collapsed, never to regain her vitality again. Minutes later on the lawn in front of Dr. Otto's, his whole staff came out to watch as he gave her the lethal injection. Like everyone who knew her, they loved Coco too. Dr. Otto administered the injection, and as Coco and I stared into each other's eyes, she left for the great by and by. Dr. Otto said it would be the hardest thing I'd ever do, and so far he's been right about that. I cried about the usual things, her nose marks on the car window, a bone I found under my desk, the fact that I wished I'd gone on more walks with her and let her lead. Sweet tears came with the happy memories. Among my favorites was a spectacularly still sunset off Cayucas when Coco, leaning over the end of the pier, began barking and singing until she'd aroused all the seagulls, pelicans, otters, and dolphins to join in with her. It was an amazing sight, and there at the center of it all was Coco, like a band leader at the podium, leading nature's own version of the Hallelujah Chorus. I was pretty inconsolable those first few days. Wendy called to check on me. She said I should try to remember that Coco wasn't really gone, that her spirit would always be sitting on my shoulder. And that's when I remembered how it all started, that amazing first leap when Coco picked me.